Hello everyone, this is Dan, and uh, I noticed I haven't been posting in quite a while, so this time you get an actual tutorial instead of a showcase. I have been doing several other designs, and I'll be posting them later on. But for now, this is a tutorial on a showcase I already did before. As some of you may have noticed, this is a train hub, and I'll be showing you how to build it. Uh, the original one was slightly different. I did cha make several changes here to make it work a lot better than before. Mainly the arrival mechanism here was changed quite a bit and the departure mechanism right there was also changed because in the previous one, as someone mentioned, there was the problem with the normal chests, so I replaced them with ender chests. Sometimes there was enough time, so I put in two a detector rails here instead of a single one. And finally, for the arrival mechanism here, there was also some problems where the hub had to be facing in a very specific way, orientation, you know, nor north, south, east, west wise. But this time I just changed it so that it could be built in whichever orientation you want and it still works. So other than that, it's basically the same as it was before and I will now show you how to build it. So what you want is basically a flat like area. So if you want to do this in a survival world, you will probably need to do some um, resurfacing or whatever it's called, terraforming. Hmm. Anyway, basically you want, uh, I think it's something like uh, probably a chunk's worth. So 16 by 16 area should be enough. So get yourself some blocks and some planks. So the first thing you want is a three by five area. So that should be it, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, that's good. And now I won't be changing the entire floor to the same one, but if you want it to look good, you, I would suggest doing that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 11, like so. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's an eleven by ten, just like that. And as I said, I won't be changing it completely. I'll just be doing a general kind of border. So if you want it to look good, and you won't actually be able to see this when you're in the game because this would be the redstone portion, but you know, just to make it look good, I would suggest uh, covering it up, right? So going off to this side here, you want right at the edge of there to just build another border like that, then two more and one, two, like that, just in general in that case. So go off to this side and one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, uh, Two, hmm. let's see, how did I do this? Ah, I'm building it off by block, that's the reason. You want two blocks in between, there we go. Like that, and one up, one further up, break that block and extend that. You want to extend it to almost one block less than this one. Now these here are just build them up and this is where the uh, connections to other train stations will be and you want four of them with a single bl block in between or a single blocks distance one two three and uh, this should be four good now just bring them up like that like that i said uh, all right there we go that's good and let's put in the actual railways. So you want some power rails, some normal rails, some detector rails, and some levers. So get some the power rails. And what do we want the connections to be is we're currently doing the arrivals, so the or the departures, so the bottom one. Now we want them to be connecting that way. So one, two, power rail, one, two. And let's just do the same for all of them. That would be enough for now like that good so the next thing you want is the connections that way so put in like that and a block or and a normal rail and here it doesn't matter since the last one should, can be just like that 
Last thing is just put in the last uh, power rails, and as you notice, they should be feed the connections of the rails should be done this way, which means that if power is provided, they flip and you go that that way. Then like that, power rail here, normal rail here, a dispenser at the very end, and a power rail on top of it. Then two blocks here. And this time we're doing the actual redstone. So you want some redstone, redstone repeaters, and redstone torches. You don't need any more dispensers, so you can leave that. Put in the redstone torch there. Uh, I'll clear off these, but you know, it's flooring, so do whatever you want. Power in there at four ticks, and redstone dust up like that. Now, going off to this side, let's just do the connection to the arrivals. So you want the detector rails at here and one more block right here. So offset by one. Then regular railways and some power railways. And uh, there we go. Uh, change that to power since it's going up and just regular. just like that. And notice that this way the connections actually should be going the correct way, so facing that way, so it's better to start from this side for the, all the connections. Ah, no, that, there we go. And uh, notice there's power rails up above. So let's power on all the power rails. So one right at the bottom there, one right here, and one down there. Note that for these ones down at the bottom, they do have to be levers as opposed to redstone torches, because otherwise they would power this and flip it around, which we do not want. And uh, one more here, and that should be all of them powered. So that's good. Notice that this one here isn't powered and that one isn't powered. One of them should be powered, so let's take care of that. Go like that and put in a lever inside facing it that way so that will power that that's sh as it should be close that off uh, not like that like that and you can actually we will need some staircases so you might as well grab them and place the last one like uh, not like that but this way there we go finally just a block there and that covers that off now we'll do the arrivals. So you want some hoppers facing into the dispenser. Break these two bottom blocks and continue the hopper chain and out two. So two hoppers should be visible and these ones you can cover. Actually, no you can't. You can cover one of them and go up. That's the way you should be. Put another block there and let us connect the tripwire. So find some string and some tripwire hooks. You want two tripwire hooks and one string. Put in the string. And that's basically it for actually the departure, at least for as uh, rail carts are concerned. We'll need a lot of redstone here to do the selection mechanism. So let's go over here and do the actual arrival. So close that all off. Put two blocks there, one block up. Uh, these can be closed off. We need a redstone torch and a sticky piston, as well as some glass. Let's see, uh, my, while we're in this setup, we also want a lava bucket. We want a sign, and we want that ender chest. So let's start right here, actually. Put in the sign right there. It can also be in here, as long as it's taking up this spot and pour in the lava. If you're doing this in creative, be careful because you can walk into that lava at the moment at least. So close that off there and put the ender chest. And let us put in the floor in here and the floor in here. Close that off and we'll take care of that later. I'll break that out, actually, that's not supposed to be there. Like that and like that. Get 
another sticky piston, put it there, and finally block that off. So that's this entire part is actually done. We can close all of that off, and we can close all of that off, and uh, put a ceiling or something. Depends on what you want, really. So get some redstone dust. Ah, oh, damn, I removed the sticky pistons. We do need sticky pistons, and we do need the glass. All right. So redstone dust down here and up onto this block and redstone torch on that bl same block and a sticky piston on that torch. And finally, the glass here. That's good. So basically, at the moment, the lava is completely safe. If you do not have this and go game mode uh, zero, you can actually get damaged by the lava, but as soon as you step out, you can kind of, you know, you're still getting damaged, but it's really low. So I wouldn't suggest doing that. And there is a moment when you're fl flying in on the minecart and you haven't been pushed out yet that you could potentially step forward and start getting damaged. So I would not recommend uh, cl doing anything with the mouse buttons or sorry, the keyboard buttons while you're on the railway. Just, you know, go away, drink some tea. And when you come back, you'll be standing right here. All right, let's go game mode one again. So we can actually continue building. And this entire part, you can do whatever you want and encase it, entomb it, do whatever. Close that off, get some stairs, uh, put in the stairs here so that the redstone line is still connected. That is important, an important line and like that. And you can actually just cover that entire thing in any way you want. The way I did it personally is just by glass like that and just covered up more or less like that with uh, you can just put in there we go that should be more or less good as I said you know you can do whatever you want here it's all up to you note that even though the line here is only a single block you don't get damaged because of the glass it's you know transparent and this way you can't accidentally walk in and the monsters can't walk in and that's all good. Which does remind me that if you go down below, you'd want to put glass here for the exact same reason. Times it's zero. I should do daily um, slash game rule. Do daily cycle false. There we go. All right. So now we won't be bothered by the sun anymore, which is a good time set 2000 get ourselves even better late. All right, now let's do the actual redstone for the selection, which is actually the only thing left to do. So we want a redstone repeaters and we want them leading right into there, one, two, three. Then another set of redstone repeaters leading into the redstone repeaters to log them and blocks in front like so. Finally, just connect it like that and just like that. That should be good. Let's see, yeah, and let's start with the button selection mechanism. One, two, three, four. Blocks up on top of them. Get some buttons, signs, and uh, lights. There we go. You want buttons at the bottom here. You want lights on top of there. And just uh, close that off like that and like that with some signs up there, which tell you which way they're going. Know that this one is the first one and it just continues on with this one being the very last one there. So that's good. What you wanna do next is just place blocks in front of here and redstone repeaters right here, blocks right above them here and um, let's see rest some comparators right here and I think they should be at one tick give me a moment all right uh, actually they do have to be different so set them to four ticks then go off to the side and just lead it to the side here uh, let's 
I was a bit wrong. There's it's slightly bigger. It's actually 11 by 11. I was looking at a different design for some non apparent reason. So give it up and just give it a general staircase up like that. Bring it all the way up and uh, take some blocks and put them in front of the lights. Then you want some droppers. Put a line of droppers right here facing up. Get some blocks up above there so you can place the droppers facing down. And there we go, you've got just uh, two or four sets of two, uh, two droppers facing into each other vertically like so. Yeah, you can cover that up, we don't need that. At the central two, you want to have comparators leading out. You want to put this one up, put some redstone dust down at the bottom and a repeater like that and another block here. And that'll be kind of this. The thing is for this last one, it doesn't matter if power is provided because as long as there is no power to the other three, it will automatically go to the last one. Whereas this one, we don't need a comparator because we can use this block right here. So put two of them here, put two repeaters like that another block here and a redstone torch there close that one off there and redstone like that and there we go that's actually the connection for it done hmm. i'm pretty sure that's the way it should be anyway i'll get back if i somehow made a mistake with that but for now, what we want to do is do the connections here. So, all right, uh, you need to kind of change this up a bit because of this uh, inverter, because it kind of needs to, um, let's see. Yeah, this should work. There we go. That's actually the way it's supposed to be. A minor mistake of me, sorry. Right, uh, let's see, where were we? Right, bring this two blocks, put redstone repeaters up on top of them and redstone dust there. Then a block up and a block sideways like that and down there. What we want to do next is just kind of create a line stretching this way like that and uh, probably connect this last line here to there. All right, so block into there, uh, actually keep that one like that and here get the redstone dust leading up into a repeater then up above and like so you can connect these and notice that they connect and you don't want them to so place a block right there that's good and uh, let's see you can place a redstone torch there and a repeater there and uh, there all right, so the next thing you want to do is build a simple RS snow latch here. So blocks like that, a redstone torch there. Down below, break this one and put another redstone torch and redstone dust up like that. Actually, break this one down one, put in redstone dust and another torch right here. And a redstone repeater at four ticks leading into that block. Now to provide the connection to reset the arsenal latch, we provide just two repeaters leading it into here from here. So that means that when the tripwire is triggered, it will reset the arsenal latch. The one that actually sets it, it leads off from here. In here, connects to this one. And finally, in this one, it has a redstone repeater. Reason for that is you put a block of iron and now it's connected to this line as well and then you can put a redstone torch up on top of it. Getting yourself some hoppers, you create a simple two hopper chain like so, and a comparator leading out of it, which should be connected to this repeater like that. Now, minor change here is you definitely want to have a redstone torch to reset this because this uh, in the way it's set up it will not actually work so change that into the block and a redstone torch and you want 
basically more or less the same setup here. So break that, put in a block, break that and put in a torch. There we go. All right, so more or less what this does is the one you're supposed to go to will be the one that gets selected. I'll tell you about these later, but for now you can put in nuts. No, I was looking for iron. I think it's 16, but you kind of want to play around with those. What it does is it basically won't allow another person to get in or to in fact reset the destination for that the amount of time the hoppers uh, take to go one way and then the other. And what this means is that while the person traveling along these isn't, you know, hasn't left the system yet, you don't want anyone else here to be able to change the destination. So you set in, you go, and these ones are locked up until a certain amount of time where you, you definitely have enough time to leave off into the destination you want to be going into. So going into here, I think I put in, yeah, I did. Not sure if I already mentioned this, but you want a single block in the droppers. Uh, doesn't matter which dropper, the top one or the bottom you put in, just make sure there's only one for every two. So now you can go into here and, right, we want to put in the reset. So go over here and put in several blocks, just a line like that, put the block above it so they don't interact and connect this redstone line. All right, that should be it for the selection. Yeah, we're good. Um, give me a moment. Yeah, I don't know. It sometimes does that for some non-apparent reason. It's, uh, I was gonna say very rare, but apparently not. Hmm. All right, uh, just in case, I'm not exactly sure what causes it, but let's put in a sticky piston here and a block above it and set this to two ticks which should mean that the selections go through like that. All right, that should, I believe, stop the random problem. There we go. So now let's select the first one. Fla get over into here and notice it's going into the first one. So that's good. We select the second one and notice this one connects like that and we should be going into the second one. We select the third one and just making sure that everything works and it should be going into the third one and last but not least we select the last one which is in fact the same as none of them being selected because we aren't taking the measurement of the last one for anything but the light meaning that all of these three are off and it's going into the very last one sort of a you know if everything else fails go that way all right and that i believe takes care of everything to make sure it works, I kind of would recommend going into here, getting yourself a button, breaking these and putting a button into there. Then also go into here and put a button, where is it? Yeah, you kind of can't place too many buttons on the inside. But yeah, place a button there and just close it off so you can press it from here if you get inside. And the reason for this button is if there, for some reason, there isn't a railway cart in here already, you can kind of go through the back and click that button and it'll just launch the non-existent cart and spawn a new one in there. So now what do we want is just to go into here and spam some minecarts in. And let's check, yeah, notice there's three minecarts in that hopper. Let's click this button here to spawn it, spawn one. There you go. And now, all right, that is a bit too long. All right, so actually you want, instead of 16, let's go with 10. I believe 10 is what I used, so 10 should be enough. So we, the way to do this is we're on the very last one we click the button, it launches it, that is closed, and then that goes through, and that switches. And yeah, it kind of went, uh, maybe even eight, actually. Eight seems to also work. So we click the button, 
it launches it and then once it's out of the system this resets here yeah, we might actually work out with six six might actually work as well sends it off sends off the reset and it's good yeah uh set these to four ticks and the reason for this is that this will actually send off the pulse to reset when it's halfway done so when the six go one way and then the other way it won't do that so let's see yeah uh actually set this to four heck i think even four works uh, I had it on 10 on the last design, so I'm kind of playing around at the moment. Yep, yeah, that's good. So besides the fact we've got a huge horde of minecarts there, let's actually go over here and just for this tutorial, I will connect these together. So it return does, you know, the minecarts return. For you, you can kind of lead them off to wherever you want. And we might actually be running out of minecarts at the moment. Well, I went in, whoops. All right, so it sends it off, you go through, and here it breaks and pushes you out, and you are done. So, uh, yeah, I unintentionally just showed you that it works. Let's spawn in some more minecarts. And break this one for, for the moment, just so I can see the minecart count. Yeah, I didn't break anything there. So as you can notice, there is two minecarts. You pick a destination, you get inside. It closes off under you, it sends you off to the destination you want. Gets through, breaks it. The minecart actually falls through the lava and gets collected by the hopper. And because of this, you don't pick up the minecart. And the total number of minecarts here remains the same. Well, you know, unless it ends up in the other side and then comes back. So, you know, this is rather simple, but if you want, you can connect the hopper chain into a giant double chest where you can keep at the overload of minecarts and then just take the feed from the chest and feed it back into the dispenser here. And I'll leave that up to you. But this is basically it. At the moment, you are done. What you can do at the afterwards is just put in some walls around it kind of like that if you want you can get a door and put it into here so that that's the way to get into the back for all the redstone cover that up some more into here these can be walls like that um, I'm just coming up with random things here. You can probably just end the video here, but just to show you a nice setup. Like that, and got, get some glass, put in the glass into there. Close that off, put in some sort of porch. Do something about the sides, obviously. Put in a door. You can get in, and it looks rather good. Uh, put in block there. Close that off. You do want this one to be empty. So just a reminder there. One, two, three, and there should be empty. Like that. And note that when you get in, this block will get pushed out. So the way I took care of that, if you remember, is I put a random block in front of it. And then just some decoration in on top of there with a cactus growing out of it and you know it looks good and it kind of hides the fact that there's a piston pushing that block so yeah and then you know depart arrivals departures there list of where each one is going you select one you go into here you click like that you go off into the direction you want you end up at the direction and it pushes you out and you're free to go wherever you want so that is it. If you want to build this in a cave or something, you kind of just have this all naturally covered up when you dig out the hole for it, or you know, the room. If you want it to be outside, I would suggest putting in up walls. Note that this entire level here can quite easily be covered up 
none of the redstone is in any way affected if you just do this. Which means that you can just completely cover up the redstone the way you want. If you look at my showcase for this design, you will see how I did it. But the way you do it is all up to you. I will stop it here and, you know, hope you liked it. Hope you built it. Build it. It's completely uh, version 1.6 compatible and uh, anything earlier on as long as all the, uh, you know, redstone items required for this are in existence in that version. Notice that it does not use any bugs slash glitches to get you out of the minecart and still retain the minecart. So everything works out absolutely fine the way it is and I don't expect this design to be broken by future updates unless something horribly, terribly goes wrong. So this is done. It was fun. And uh, yeah, like, subscribe, and it's all up to you the rest. So signing off. See you guys. All right, a quick addition before I actually leave. I noticed this just as I was posting, but so I just decided to add it on at the end of the video. Right along in the side here, you can see it's sometimes difficult to get into the minecart. So you can break that and replace it with a staircase like that and it will allow you much easier access to the minecart to lead go and that's number one number two uh, as you noticed i did mention before that i had trouble connecting well connecting these ones to be done correctly let me break these so i can show you what i'm talking about these connections here and sometimes if the power is on it's connecting this way and sometimes it's the other way and it's rather difficult to do this and I think I figured out the reason if you just set it up like this and get yourself some rails and let's say the lever and just connect it like so uh, I think that should be enough and you switch it and it switches like that and then we establish it the same thing in four different directions and I will show you what we are talking about so there we go one on each connected like that that there There we go, and notice they're all the same. And here, if power is on, it connects to the power rail. In here, if the power is on, it connects to the power rail. In here, if the power is on, it does not. And same thing here. So as you notice, there is in fact a difference in orientation. And in fact, you can't do these. These will always be connected this way based on the power in. So it doesn't matter which ones you place first or last. The first time you provide in the power, it'll set it to the same. So which means that this cannot in fact be built in uh, this, any orientation unless I do some changes. So if you notice some problems and just check that, basically what you want is if there is no power or let's say if there is, yeah, if there is no power from here, you want it to connect to the next one which is the reason why here I did the inverse, meaning that because there is no power here, it connects in. If there is no power here, it connects, uh, I messed up somewhere. Let's see, talking again, okay. If there is power, it should be going in that way. And if there is, is no power, it should be connecting to the departure mechanism. So if you're having problems and this isn't working for you, what you need to do is actually break these, extend that, break that, extend, put in another repeater. In here, you want to break these two, put in a redstone here and a torch there. That's these two done. Now for this one, just break that, put in redstone dust and a repeater. So there we go. And if you notice, this will in fact mess up this orientation because let's say I want it to go to the last one, it will be all of them are connected. So this is not the way it's supposed to be. So if you notice that if you turn it on to the last one and they're all facing in the departure location, 
you need to just invert these signals before they get to the repeater. And as I showed you, it's either this or in this configuration where you've got direct connection, direct connection, and then inverse here, or you replace that with the way I showed it in the tutorial, where you break those, put in the block to invert the, this signal. We inverted that one while I was talking. And lastly, we invert this signal here like that. And as you notice, it works again. So this just a brief overview that I gave right now will ensure that this works in any orientation you set up your train hub. Yeah, that's it. And that's it for the video this time. So I'll be signing off. See you guys.